Okay, okay, cool, cool. What's the most artistic video game ever made? Flappy Bird! <laughs> yeah. Uh huh? Uh huh? Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new series I like to call The Autistic Critic. In this series, I'm going to be going through all things autism from across the internet and giving my thoughts on it. Hopefully, we'll have a lot of fun and maybe even learn something. Today, I thought we'd take a look at some autism stand up jokes. The fun never ends in my house. Twins are crazy. But my oldest daughter was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, autism. Oh, it's all good. No, no, no. It's great. Oh my God, it's so great. Asperger's syndrome, for those of you who don't know, is actually a highly functioning form of autism. These people are super smart, but they have trouble connecting emotionally to people. Bill Gates has it. I don't think Bill Gates has been diagnosed with autism. People just speculate that. I don't get what the funny part was in the joke. I mean, maybe it's the autism, but I don't get it. I should be so lucky. <laughs> oh, there it is. Followed by an awkward pause and not very much laughing. I guess she's implying that her daughter might end up hopefully like Bill Gates and be a famous billionaire, successful person because of her autism. And somehow that was a joke. Anyway, so, you know, now I'm jealous of my daughter because not only is she really pretty, but she has that awesome aloof quality. People will be like, oh, Isabel, you are so pretty. You are so smart. Mm. And she's like, I want snacks. <laughs> I realize Asperger's is actually genetic. It's my husband's fault. You know, for us Jewish girls, it's no fun having a special needs child unless you can get some jewelry out of it. This going to be bad. My spidey senses say this is gonna be bad. You know, for a special, for a learning disorder, you might get like a little gold charm bracelet. Asperger's and autism gets you diamond studs. I'm hoping my next kid is cerebral palsy. <laughs> did she say, did she just say that? That was her joke? <laughs> I realized though, it was actually my husband's autism that attracted me to him in the first place. He's smart, he's confident, and he's completely unavailable emotionally. You're probably with an autistic man right now and you don't even know it. <laughs> we love that stuff. Women love that stuff. Oh my God, autism, I want some. <laughs> I'll laugh because this is really bad. She's making an autism joke about her husband, I guess, because he's emotionally unavailable because he's a man and we make jokes about men, and it's funny. They're all autistic. Yes, I want some. Ask yourself these questions, you know. Is he smart? Is he self-centered? Does he not care enough about you? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, you're with an autistic man. Why aren't you laughing? The beauty of autism is that it usually comes packaged with something else fabulous, like OCD. My husband not only has autism, but he has OCD, and you have no idea what it's like having sex with my husband, but I'll paint a picture for you. Ah, uh, please don't paint a picture. No, I, I, this, makes, this picture makes me very uncomfortable. I'm gonna fast forward just a little bit. And inevitably, it ends the same way anyway. You know, I turn to him, I'm like, oh honey, <laughs> that was so good, you are so handsome. I love you. And he's like, I want snacks. Do we have any snacks? I knew it. <laughs> That's terrible. So this was just a little bit of stand up from someone who doesn't have autism, who's speaking on autism from an outside perspective, but let's move on to someone who does have autism doing stand up comedy. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of a breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah, I'm also different because um, I'm Latino. I'm the second Latino up here, and I have this accent. And um, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm um, I'm autistic. Well, I'm, I'm semi-autistic, which makes me an endearing. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay, that was kind of cute. That was a cute joke. <laughs> That makes me autistic-ish. <laughs> okay, I don't quite get that one, but I kind of like this dude because he's like kind of awkward up there and making his jokes and just doing his thing about autism. I guess, let's watch some more. <laughs> People think I'm retarded, but retards and autistics are completely different. Like the first major difference is the spelling. <laughs> When I was a kid, I wanted to get a dog. And my mom was like, well, you can get a cat. It's the same thing. And I was like, no, it's not, mom. And she's like, how are they different? And I was like, the spelling. <laughs> you could plug that joke into just about anything, but okay. Oh, even I know that. <laughs> Next, we have a TEDx talk from, um, I think his name is Mark McCreary. And he's doing like a talk on autism and it's like a comedy skit at the same time. How are we doing today, York? <laughs> All right, adequate, C plus, B minus, very hot out. All right, uh, this is weird. Uh, I met a woman recently and told her that I have Asperger's syndrome. She said, that's ridiculous, you're doing great. <laughs> Actually, I find that joke a little funny because people say that sometimes. They're like, well, you don't seem autistic or you do so good. You're not autistic. Like, it has something to do with it about how well you're doing. So, yeah, that was kind of a, that was a relatable joke, Mark. Uh, autism is often associated with varying degrees of difficulties with social skills, communication, and behaviors. But really, yeah. But really, one of the greatest challenges someone on the spectrum will ever experience is being misunderstood. For instance, people often ask me, what's the biggest difference between Asperger's and autism? And I think I'd have to say the biggest thing would be the spelling. I feel like I've heard this before. Where have I heard this? Now, one of the best life lessons my parents taught me was to overcome adversity through humor. Because your life isn't defined by the things that have happened to you so much as your opinion about those things. I think that's why people identify so much with self-deprecating humor, you know? Taking comedy that was directed at you, then subverting it into positive, optimistic humor and using it to make people laugh with rather than at you is not only an effective coping strategy, but can also teach people how to look at life from a different point of view. <sighs> is anyone else out of breath watching this? He just said like so many words in a sentence without taking a breath. I feel like I was underwater. I feel like I was watching The Guardian again. Remember that movie? As a matter of fact, four out of five doctors say that comedy is an absolute good. The fifth doctor was going through some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now when I tell people I do stand up about being on the spectrum, the first thing I usually hear is, wow, how can you make light of such a serious topic? Well, my whole point is that life on the spectrum doesn't need to be one giant PSA of an empty swing blowing in the wind set to Sarah McLaughlin music. <laughs> like, you can't force acceptance, but you can teach it. And if humor makes the learning process more enjoyable, then I like to think everyone benefits. Now, people, I don't see myself <laughs> as a puzzle to be solved, but rather an enigma cloaked in mystery and wrapped in bacon. Wrapped in bacon? If I was wrapped in bacon, then everybody would love me. I'd never get another hate comment again. Wrapped in bacon sounds good. <laughs> really, I see Asperger's as more of a social difference than a disorder. But if I had to use one word to describe it, that would be uh, awkward. <laughs> that there, ladies and gentlemen, is the default baseline feeling of Asperger's syndrome. <laughs> like this TED talk? I just kid it. I just kid, Mark. I kid. I kid. As an Aspie, I can vouch on behalf of the entire Aspie race, we do feel and appreciate emotions. We just don't express it in a conventional way. <laughs> you see, they don't know when to laugh, because I don't even think that was supposed to be a funny part, and they're all still chuckling confusedly. Confusedly? Confused? They seem confused. But he makes a good point there about emotions, and sometimes people think you're not having the right emotions at the right time, but really you are on the inside, just not my show, like on your face or in what you're doing. Like if something sad happens, sometimes I'll just sit there, but then like I'll start crying later, or if I'm really happy about something, well, usually if I'm happy, you'll know because I go crazy and 
and get very excited, but you kind of get my drift. Like sometimes I'm not matching what's happening, but I'm feeling it. And of course I feel empathy and all, I feel so much of that. Yeah, he makes a good point here. So another misconception about being on the spectrum is uh, that we don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, Taking things literally is the default mode for a lot of Aspies, which is why so many of us don't pick up on subtleties and sarcasm or irony. But a lot of us have a great sense of humor. It's just so deadpan that it doesn't always register. I mean, uh, my ex-girlfriend, the same one, uh, <laughs> she asked me to buy her a slinky dress, so I got her this. Oh my gosh, she's gonna pull out a slinky, I know it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It doesn't fit very well, but you should see her go downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I think they thought there was a little more implied in that joke than really was, because I really think he was just talking about the slinky going down the stairs, but they were like, oh, <laughs> that was a con controversial joke. But yeah, that was, uh, that was a, little, a little tough to watch. But I like his energy. I think he really has a good intent to make these talks and teach people something about autism and meet somebody who has Asperger slash autism and like that he has a sense of humor and make jokes about it. So I appreciate the, the effort behind it. I think he could get his work on his delivery a little more and maybe um, upgrade his jokes a little bit. But all in all, in all seriousness, I give these people credit for getting up there and doing stand up in front of people because that junk is hard and scary. And if your joke doesn't land, they'll just stand there or boo or heckle you off the stage. I don't know if Jen could handle it. So I give them credit for being up there. So, what would you guys like to see me? critique next week. Um, I was thinking either we could look at autism t-shirts from across the web or we could look at something else. If you have a suggestion, leave it in the comments. If you have a mean comment like Jen, why you think you can talk about other people's comedy because your comedy is stupid too, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'm waiting. This is Jen Ventures TV. Thanks for watching and I'll see you another day with another video. Okay.